Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at fractional exponents. We're going to look at the types of questions you see here. One with a one in the numerator. We'll do one question and then a sample practice question. We'll have numbers that are not one in both the numerator and denominator. Again, I'll do a sample question and practice. And then finally, we'll do questions with negative fraction exponents. So that's going to be what we go over today. Let's get to it. First off, the, a fractional exponent can be broken down into its parts. So I want to show you where all of the pieces go. There is how it would look when you actually solve it. So it's a square root. The one is the exponent of the number four or of the base number. The two is what root you're finding. If you're finding a square root or a cubed root and the four goes on the base of the number inside of the square root. So that's how you would set it up. The placement's important and we're going to go over the same placement over and over. But now let's talk about solving. Once we solve, we can basically write it out in a couple of different ways. First, I want to emphasize that a square root, when you have that two on the outside of the square root symbol, it's just a regular square root and you don't need to write the two. Just like when you have the one as an exponent of four, you don't need to write this. So when we're solving, this could actually be done a lot simpler here. It's the square root of four, which is two, or you can simply write it as square root of four is two straightforward there you go now we have a practice question i want you to try this one out it's a little bit more complicated so if you need help just continue watching the recording and i'll show you fully how this is done go all right first with the setup we put the one as the exponent of our base number three is our root so in this case it's the cubed root of 27. The cubed root means what number times itself three times or what number to the power of three will give you 27. That's the placement. Now when we're asked to solve, we just solve it like this, the cubed root of 27. Three is the cubed root of 27. In other words, three to the power of three is 27. That's how you solve it. Now let's look at what happens when we have two numbers. This was pretty straightforward with the one over two and one over three as our exponent. But when we get two over three or three over two, it's gonna look a little bit different. We will set it up the same way though. So our placement is the same. Take a look at that. Where do all the numbers go? There, the numerator is our exponent. The denominator is our root, and the larger number eight is our base inside of the square root. Now, that's our placement. I wanna point something out here, that when you're solving this, you can actually solve it in two ways. You can solve the cubed root first, or you can solve the eight squared first. So I'll show you how that works, and it, you get exactly the same answer every time. It's based on preference, really, but I'll show you how I solve that. So I'm going to solve um, the way that it's written on the left first. I'm going to first do 8 squared, which is 64, and then I find the cubed root of 64, and that's 4, because 4 to the power of 3 is 64. The other way to do that is to find the cubed root of 8 first, which is 2, and then raise that to the power of 2, which gives you 4. Notice that for me, Finding the cubed root of 8 was a little bit easier because I wasn't dealing with quite as big a number. So finding the cubed root, finding the root, whatever it is, in this case cubed root, might be easier at first. All right. So I want you to try this one out, 9 to the power of 3 over 2. This one is a little bit different with the numbers, but try that one out, and then I'm going to walk you through the solution. 3, 2, 1, go. All right, let's talk about placement. All of the parts go exactly where we've been talking about it. Your numerator is your exponent, your denominator is your root, and your nine is your base. So the base is the base. That stays the same. All right, that's the placement of all the numbers. Now when we solve it, we can do it in one of two ways. In this case, what I'm going to do is because that two is the square root, I'm gonna get rid of that. 
And in solving this way, I do 9 to the power of 3, which is 729. And the square root of 729 is 27. So you can see that. If I had done it this way, it would be the square root of 9, which is 3, and then 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Notice, both ways get you the same answer. So whichever way you feel more comfortable with, do it. Pretty straightforward. All right. Now we're going to go into negative fractional exponents. When you have a negative fraction, um, when you have a negative exponent of any kind, the first thing that you do with that negative is you make it into, you make the whole statement into a fraction. So we're going to have a fraction and a fraction. And I want to show you where all of the parts led to this. But just take a look at that and try and see where all the pieces are here. First of all, the negative, and I pointed to the one there, that's not completely accurate, but that negative exponent makes it into a fraction. In other words, it moves it to the denominator in this case. All right. So that negative makes it into a fraction. The one is still your exponent. The two is your, your root and the 49 is the base. So everything, the setup is the same. You notice with all the placement, the one change is that that negative in the exponent makes it into a fraction and everything, <clears throat> everything raised to that power of a negative goes into the opposite placement. So if that was in the denominator, it would be raised to the numerator. In this case, it's in a numerator, so we have to put it into the denominator and we need a place filler and that's what that one does. All right, so now we need to solve, and again, you can solve this in, in, in one of two ways, but I'm just gonna simplify. Notice 49 to the power of one can be 49 and that square root with the two, we can just get rid of the two. So just to make our lives easier, I go from this to this. And then it's just saying one over the square root of 49. Well, the square root of 49 is seven, so my solution is one seventh, and that's it. There's not really um, two different ways to solve this one like in our previous examples because we do have that one in the numerator um, of our exponent. So that kind of makes it a little more straightforward. All right. So here is the next one. I am going to show you the setup just to make sure that everyone gets going. But I want you to try that one out and come back to the recording and I will walk through the solution for that. Go. All right. So here we have an interesting situation. We had that negative, which made it change into a fraction. We had three in the numerator of our exponent, so that's going to be our new exponent of 36. We have two there, so it's going to be the square root, and 36 remains our base. That's the placement. When we are solving, I am going to show you how to solve it in two different ways because we've got two different numbers, right? We've got some options here. So we can solve it like you see on the left where I'm going to first solve 36 to the power of three and then take the square root. Or you can do what you see there where I'll take the square root of 36 and then raise it to the power of three. You'll notice we get the same answer both times. All right, so 36 to the power of three is 46,656. And the square root of 46,656 is 216. Um, that one, we got some big numbers. Let's go over to our other example, 36. We take the square root of 36, which is six, and then six to the power of three is 216. So you can see you get the same exact answer. It's just the order that you solve them. That was it. So a quick recap, you do placement based on um, the rules that we were looking at, and then you do solving. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.